News reports in Buenos Aires talked about British setbacks, heavy casualties at the hands of the Argentine Air Force. But as the people were reading about new Argentine triumphs, military communiques also hinted that the British may have established a new beachhead southwest of Stanley. June 10th is Malvinas Day in Argentina. Malvinas, the Argentine name for the Falklands. For years, this day has been observed with speeches, military ceremonies, and band concerts to publicize the Argentine claim over the islands. Today, the speakers noted these ceremonies have special significance because Argentine blood is being spilled to enforce that claim. The rallying cries of nationalism are mingled with prayers for peace. And there's hope here that the visit of John Paul II, a man regarded as a messenger of peace, can help this country. It's being billed as strictly a pastoral journey, but the Vatican is obviously concerned about showing even-handedness after the Pope's trip to England. The Argentine government is getting propaganda mileage out of the papal visit. This television announcement welcoming the Pope says, all the homeland will be revived. Argentina is by your side. The music is from a song designed to boost war morale. George Lewis, NBC News, Buenos Aires. Catholicism runs deep here. Eighty-seven percent of the population is Catholic. In Argentina, it's more than a religion, it's a way of life. There's no official church here, but the nation's constitution requires that the president be Catholic. And so with a deep sense of pride in religion, Argentina is getting ready for the first sitting pope ever to visit this country. The pope is only supposed to be here about 33 hours. And that's long enough for just about every storefront in Buenos Aires to be plastered with papal posters. For street vendors to hawk a variety of Vatican souvenirs, and for workmen to put last-minute touches on a former tow truck that's been converted to a parade vehicle for the Pope, complete with bulletproof glass. Today, the Pope travels to the small city of Lujan, where he'll celebrate a Mass. And on his second and final day, the Holy Father will lead a huge outdoor Mass at the Monument to the Spanish People here at the capital. Bob Berkowitz, ABC News, Buenos Aires. Argentinians gathered to celebrate Malvinas Sovereignty Day. On June 10, 1829, a decree created Argentine political and military command over the islands, and in 1973, a law was passed declaring today the day of the affirmation of Argentina's rights over the Malvinas. The crowds cheered as their president, General Leopoldo Galtieri, made his way from the Casa Rosata. Seldom so close to his people, Galtieri stopped to greet those who broke through the crowds to touch him. He seemed pleased. But the junta has reason to smile tonight if one believes claims they have halted the full-scale British offensive on Port Stanley, the Malvinas capital. Flanked by the ranking military establishment, Galtieri presided over the sunset lowering of the blue and white. Tonight, on the eve of the historic visit of the Pope to Buenos Aires, these people seem more committed than ever to their fight and a victory in the Malvinas. Pamela Wallen, CTV News, Buenos Aires.
In the square in front of the presidential palace tonight, it was as it used to be in the first flush of the Argentine conquest of the Falklands two months ago. The enthusiasm, the flag waving, the chanting. What brought it about was the coming together of two events. First, the annual celebration in Argentina of Malvinas Day, and then the confirmation of devastating losses suffered by the British in Argentine air attacks near Port Stanley. For weeks, as the British landed and advanced, Argentina seemed subdued. But now, with this sudden turn in the fortunes of war, spirits here are soaring again, and for the moment anyway, the cost of war seems all but forgotten. But not altogether. Away from the television lights and the exuberance of the young, out in the dark fringes of the square, there was restraint. This week, it was the British who suffered heavy losses. Last week, the Argentinians. Next week, who knows? But tomorrow, the Pope arrives, and on television here, the Pope's mission for peace and the Argentine cause were intertwined. The Vatican insists that the Pope's visit here will be purely pastoral and not political. But in the do-or-die atmosphere here, John Paul may find it difficult to keep the two apart. Joe Schlesinger, CBC News, Buenos Aires. Argentinians jammed the Plaza de Mayo Thursday night for a Malvinas Day celebration that released the tensions of a week-long standoff at Puerto Argentino. of Argentinians jammed the Plaza de Mayo Thursday night for a Malvinas Day celebration that released the tensions of a week-long standoff at Puerto Argentino. sang, chanted, and cheered amid news reports that Argentina had emerged victorious in an eight-hour air, land, and sea battle that raged Wednesday near the island's capital city. The loudest applause was for the leader of the three-man military junta that controls this country, General Leopoldo Galtieri, the man who made the decision to invade the islands and take by force what Argentina had claimed as theirs for the last 149 years. Galtieri did not speak to either reporters or the crowd, but he moved through them, an imposing figure, even in the midst of so many bodies who rushed forward for a closer look. This day, there was little doubt that his government and the general himself enjoyed an enhanced standing in Argentina. It had come with the news that once again, the Air Force had imposed heavy losses on the British fleet. Indeed, if Argentine estimates are correct, Wednesday had been the worst single day since the task force traveled to the South Atlantic. 400 troops attempting to land at Fitzroy, south of Puerto Argentino or Port Stanley had been killed. British reports acknowledge very heavy losses. <laughs> now, 
Malvinas Day marks the date 153 years ago that Argentina installed its first governor of the Malvinas. Four years later, the British would take it away by force. But today, it was back in Argentina's hands. If there was a feeling that it was about to be taken by Great Britain once again, it did not show in this gathering. What showed here was a determination to fight for what this country believes is rightfully theirs. Jim Clancy, CNN, Buenos Aires. Argentina prepares for the Pope. Pope John Paul II will be the first pontiff ever to visit this Latin American country. And it took the undeclared war with the British to bring him here. While waiting more than 160 years, Argentines had but a few short weeks to prepare. Thursday, the Automobile Club delivered this country's version of the Pope Mobile to the Catholic Church, a converted tow truck with a bulletproof glass enclosure to permit a public glimpse of the Pope while providing protection for the pontiff at the same time. Vatican flags drape balconies and adorn poles throughout the capital, Buenos Aires. Souvenir stands, whose wares had consisted primarily of pins, buttons, and banners proclaiming Argentina's rights to the Malvinas, now do a brisk business in Pope John Paul memorabilia. The trip here is an obvious exercise in ecumenical diplomacy, an attempt to balance the Pope's recent long-planned visit to Great Britain. To remove even the slightest hint, the pontiff favored either side in the conflict over the islands. While in England, Pope John Paul met Queen Elizabeth. Here, he will hold talks with President Leopoldo Galtieri. Friday, he will also travel to Luhan, where the Virgin of Luhan is this country's most holy shrine. He'll deliver an outdoor mass to more than a million pilgrims. A similar mass is planned in Buenos Aires Saturday. The overriding theme from the Pope of Peace will be a call for an end to the fighting on the islands. Can the pontiff deliver? To tell you the truth, I don't think so. Father Frederico Richards, a third generation Irish Argentine and director of an Irish weekly newspaper. And, uh, unless uh, England uh, modifies its attitude, I think this war won't end, even if they take Porto Argentina. If that be the case, which yet is doubtful, uh, Argentina will continue its war. There's suspicion among the people of Argentina that British will use the diversion of the Pope's visit to launch a major assault on Puerto Argentino. While there's no evidence the Pondra's visit will spark renewed fighting on the islands, there are growing indications it will do little to prevent it. James Allen Miklaszewski, CNN, Buenos Aires. and religion, Argentines are united, and on the eve of the Pontus visit, thousands swarm the Plaza de Mayo to pledge their fight for the Malvinas will not end. In both politics and religion, Argentines are united, and on the eve of the Pontus visit, thousands swarm the Plaza de Mayo to pledge their fight for the Malvinas will not end. Many moved to chants and tears by President Leopoldo Gautieri. In cathedrals across the city, they prayed for an end to the war and gave thanks the Pope will touch and bless their soil. I say the most important support for us is our faith. Very happy because uh, I think that all the people here like the visit of the Pope the same way I think. Suppose that uh, Argentine people 
is really happy because there, there's a very strong uh, Catholic feeling there, here. Michelle Gillen, Newswatch 10, Buenos Aires. They had come because they'd been told to come by President Galtieri himself. But even he must have hoped that he would have had to acknowledge the cheers of a larger crowd that actually turned up in the Plaza de Maggio. This was to have been the mass rally on the day which celebrated the last time Argentina had seized control of the Falklands 159 years ago. It was transmitted live on all Argentine radio and television stations, but the darkness concealed the fact that the square was less than half full. There were thousands, but not hundreds of thousands, singing the national anthem as there had been in the same square two months ago. The disappointing turnout certainly reflects the change in the mood of the people here. Fewer and fewer see reason to shout about the war anymore. But a more basic reason is that the people have at least temporarily switched their attention to Pope John Paul, who is due to arrive here within the next hour. And in this staunchly Roman Catholic country, there is no question of his being disappointed at the number of people who will turn out to greet him during his two-day visit to Argentina. Clive Ferguson for Australian Television News in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is a city full of smiling faces tonight. There is great emotion as Pope John Paul arrives here tomorrow. Without doubt, the people are ready to receive their King of Peace. Young man was so excited about the Pope's so excited about the Pope's arrival. He just didn't know how to explain it by saying he felt as, felt as if God were coming. Art. I throw to Art. They're doing headlines right now. Okay. And when they're out of headlines, they'll do a mic check. Despite the war, Buenos Aires is a city full of smiling faces tonight. There is great emotion as Pope John Paul II arrives here tomorrow. Without a doubt, the people are ready to receive their king of peace. Here it is expected to be. Very tight. And everybody in the city wants to see the Pope, and they're going to attempt to do it. Everybody wants to see, get a glimpse of the Pope, and of course we'll be there too. I have a story for you. Of course we'll be there too. Of course we'll be there too and have reports tomorrow night. Okay, is everybody awake? Yay! Despite the war, Buenos Aires tonight is a city full of smiling faces. There is great emotion as Pope John Paul II. There's great emotion as Pope John Paul II arrives here tomorrow. The people are ready to receive their King of Peace.
Oh, the bomb. Despite, despite the war, <laughs> there goes the bomb. Despite the war, Buenos Aires. Despite the war, Buenos Aires is a city full of smiling faces tonight. There is great emotion as Pope John Paul II arrives here tomorrow. Without a doubt, the people are ready yes. to receive their king of peace. I will ask you one question, you answer it and throw it to Art. Only one question. Oh, Glenn asked me the question and I throw it to Art. Right. Got it. So you throw it to Glenn at the end of your tag, question, then throw it to Art. For whom you okay. know it's <laughs> Art. Of course, we'll be there and have a voice tomorrow night. Buenos Aires is a city full of smiling faces tonight. There is great emotion. It's Pope John Paul II. It's Pope John Paul John Paul II. There's great emotion. Pope John Paul II arrives here tomorrow. Without a doubt, the people are ready to receive their King of Peace. But didn't go off. 40 seconds. <laughs> Michelle, 40 seconds. <clears throat> <clears throat> 30. Fifteen. <clears throat> Long twenty. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, thank you, Art. You know, despite the war, Buenos Aires tonight is a city filled with smiling faces. There is great emotion as Pope John Paul II arrives here tomorrow, and without doubt, the people are ready to receive their King of Peace. Tape is up. Tape is up. <clears throat> My young man was so excited. We're right, Catholic people. We will forgive, but we may not forget. Mark. There'll be an on-camera tag, and then a Q&A. She'll throw it to Glenn. That's the Q&A. One young man spoke tonight. We're so excited about it to the Pope's arrival. I just don't know how to explain it, but I feel as if God were coming. Who's going to... Glenn asked me the question, though. Right. Throw it to Glenn. Glenn. Question and then Art. Glenn and then Art. Yeah, she's fine. She looks good. I hope they're recording that. I hope you're hair checking. Young man. They're hair checking on four machines. I'm so excited. I am, I was so excited about it. About a minute, a little less than a minute. He's going to ask me about the sentiment. I can't get to that. This is probably the question we asked. I hope not security. Okay, a very short answer. We have less than two minutes left on the program. Okay. Stand by, here we come. Very short answer. You know, one young man we spoke to tonight was so excited, he didn't know how to describe his feelings, but just said, I almost feel as if God were coming. Glenn? Resentment is very evident here. Um, I think it's appropriate to note tonight, one gentleman said, we are a Catholic country, so we will forgive. The question is, will we forget? Art? We're clear, thank you. Okay.
ofrecieron su vida en defensa de nuestro derecho soberano.
físicamente entre nosotros. Hoy lo vimos en una iglesia por allí, estaba en ese sagrario, en cualquier iglesia donde entras, Cristo está físicamente presente, lo tocamos con... Thank <laughs> you. 